Good morning and welcome to our Lighthouse podcast, our morning manna, um, little Bible studies that we do, and I'm so excited to join you today. Um, I just praise God for His love and His mercy, um, but you know, one of the things that happens in our lives are things that we don't see coming. And um, I read an advertisement recently, and it described a change in the time of an event from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and it was due to unforeseen circumstances. And so that's what I want to talk about today, is the unforeseen circumstances that we face in life, and how do we face them. So let's pray, and then we can talk. Lord, thank you for our time together today, as I uh, look forward to trusting in the message that um, you have um, and so, Lord, give us ears to hear what your Spirit has to say, what your Word has to say. Renew us and strengthen us. Lord, remind us that your love never fails. It's new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So, at the time when Jesus' followers... Um, we're, we're seeking after him, and things were starting to intensify with the Pharisees and the religious leaders and all of that. Um, all of a sudden, things took a major turn, and um, we refer to that as Good Friday. And, and I'm certain that their lives were majorly disrupted. But see, we have the benefit of knowing what happened after that fact. But they didn't have that benefit. They were right in the midst of it. Just like we, when we face unforeseen circumstances, it's like, I don't know what's coming in the future. But yet, that's what can create stability in our life, is knowing who does know what's coming in the future. And that's what I want to talk about um, a little bit more today as we look at unforeseen circumstances that affect our lives and, and how do we respond to those things? Because is there a way not to be swept up into the unforeseen circumstances, but know how to respond to them? Well, there's only one way that I know how, and that's by putting our faith and our trust in the certainty of the God who always was, always is, always will be, the unchanging God. Um, and the love that he has for us. There is a passage in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 9, and it says this, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in the kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one would boast. I read that passage because God had a plan. God had a plan all along, um, knowing that man would rebel. But God had a plan. Because, see, it wasn't an unforeseen circumstance for God that man would choose to go his own way. And, and so by doing so, that brought sin into our lives. And sin brought a very painful consequence. And what that painful consequence is, as we've talked about before in the past, is death. And so it's, it's something that we don't want to talk about. It's like, well, that's one of those unforeseen circumstances that's going to happen sometime, some way, but ro not right now. But yet, now is the time to plan so that we're not disrupted, so that, wait a minute, I can respond not maybe with joy, but with strength, with faith, with confidence because of what God had done for us. Romans 5, 8, and 9 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's God's plan. It wasn't unforeseen in God to God. No, he knew it all along. It says, Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him, that Christ sets us apart by his innocent blood, so that we could have life, and we get it now. 
That's what Ephesians is talking about that I just read. But God being rich in mercy. See, God is not eager or longing to condemn us by any means. You know, I don't know if you failed last night in in, in life. You know, you made a terrible decision or or you said something you shouldn't have said, whatever. And, you, and you're feeling like you're nothing but a failure. And God is saying, no. No, I have fearfully and wonderfully made you, and I love you. John 3.16 is so simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's how I plan for the unforeseen circumstance of death. I'm not going to perish because I put my faith in a living God. Because he's full of mercy, he's rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us through the demonstration of his son's death on a cross. In our worst moment, Christ still loves us. It says, even when we are dead in our wrongdoings, there it is, he made us alive together with Christ. That's the place where we can live. By grace you have been saved. And he not only does that, but he he raises us up. We have a confidence about eternity in his kingdom. He raises us up with him and seats us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see, see, it's not something that we do. If we think we're going to merit heaven, we've deceived ourselves. And there will be an unforeseen circumstance. You'll be separated from Christ for eternity. That's called death. The second death, not just the physical death, but the permanent death. But God, but God, he's saying, I have something for you. It says, so that in the ages to come, he might show the boundless riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. See, God showed us his grace, his unmerited favor that we don't have to earn, but we receive his gift in kindness toward us. And that gift is Jesus Christ. We know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not not as a result of works, that no one will boast. I'm not going to stand before God and boast about, look at what I did. No, th- those people will stand there and they're, they'll say, but God, look at all these things that we did. And he will say to them, but I never knew you. There, there's not a personal relationship with him. They don't know him for who he truly is, this Jesus of the Bible. 1 John 5, 12 says this so plainly, so graciously, so mercifully, but so confidently. It says, he who has the Son has the life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. See, that's that's an absolute. It's not something I just believe in. No, I can know because it's not based upon things that I do. It's based upon something that God has done for me and I have simply received his gift. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe on his name. Won't you receive Jesus today? Won't you acknowledge him that he's God who is the king and he has a kingdom that he has prepared for you? And he made a way through a cross, his sacrificial death on a cross that had to pay for man's sin. But he also got the victory over death by rising from the grave three days later. That's what we celebrated yesterday, the resurrection of Jesus. That's good news. That's the gospel, folks. Won't you receive the joy of the gospel because the joy of the gospel is the joy of a relationship with Jesus that's everlasting. That's what he has for us. Won't you receive that today as he extends his gift to you? God bless you. And may I hope that you receive the gift of Easter, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ. God bless you.